but it's, it's again, it's not addressing the problem. You, if you can't hold your space and when the time comes to pay them, okay. So I'm looking for more questions. I just want to see if Terry is back on. Okay, all right, Terry, let us know if you can get back on. I'll, I'll keep going through the questions here. Thank you, guys, for typing in the questions. Uh, I've got a question question here from Ron D48. Can we create an issue all of the divine notices as mentioned in the covenant of one heaven? Yes, well, that's what we're doing. The, the, a key and most important notice of all, we set about uh, issuing the writs of the apocalypse, and the only reason we did that is that when you look at prophecy and you look at scripture, I'm a great believer. Now, what I tell you comes from, I believe, help from the other side. And when I read Revelation, one of the things that struck me was that this was a model for perfect divine notorial procedure. That is, when the time is right, it's time to foreclose on evil. It's time to foreclose on the bankers. It's time to foreclose on the madness that is promoted through the Talmud. It's time to foreclose. So that's the start of that, pro that process. But as fancy as those notices are, and there are a series of notices that are going to be coming out in, um, in a couple of weeks' time, the most powerful notice is the ecclesiastical deed poll. It's the notice when a man or a woman stands up and says, I, or we, if on the notice, we, divine or spirit, no longer uh, are willing to run away, hide, say who cares, stuff the world. I am no longer going to live as a slave. To me, and to my way of understanding of scripture, that is by far the most powerful notice. And it's why um, I felt compelled to, to express in those canons that that, in fact, is when the divine is giving them the greatest notice of protest. It's not when Franco Collins, Franco Collins is doing you know, administrative work, but the most powerful notice is when you and those that listen to this call are issuing the ecclesiastical deed poll, because that is a notice from the divine to them on a practical example of where they have overstepped the mark. Uh, when you deposit something, do you just depose yourself of something? Yeah, well, the nature of the word deposit uh, is a form of conveyance. That's exactly what it is. That's why they call deposit of faith and they've used these words. What they get us to do is they get us to promote the very concepts that condemn us. Uh, now, I didn't finish a, a discussion earlier in the call about the uh, what ultimately happens in terms of the role of, I did actually, but the role of executor. If you think about it, um, when they get us to sign the pieces of paper at the end, we're the ones that condemn ourselves. We're the ones. So they've promoted this system where basically they have no liability. We condemn ourselves. We imprison ourselves. We set up the parameters for the performance that we do. We hold all the liability. They hold none. So it's, it's trickery, absolutely. But understanding how they do it is, is key to stopping what they're doing. Um, let's have a look. Uh, person 53, person in the mask, in the mask. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, no, Terry, I'm not logged in as a, I'm not logged in as a host. No. No, I'm not. Um, okay, I'm sorry for those that are not able to type in their questions. Um, but I am trying to answer questions that come in from uh, from TalkShoe. So, okay. All right. I've got a question here from uh, On La Shuk. Uh, Frank, how does the Global Union Reserve Bank fit into this and perhaps make this process easier? Okay. What we what we're not doing at the moment is we're not trying to flog uh, a system of Okay, we have a system of, of money, a system of finance that underpins everything here. There is a global banking system called the Supreme Financial System that is attached to Ucadia. And it's one of the reasons why uh, when people cop flack and they get quite cynical and they kind of laugh about things, that they use that and say this is, you know, some uh, disinfo. It's not. 
it's sitting there, mostly ready, waiting uh, for the time that we follow through. Now, now is not the time to start asking the existing system, please, will you recognise us? What we keep finding more and more at the moment is that their system is predicated virtually identically on the things that we've said. The highest form of, of asset that we have is the thing called the supreme credit. A supreme credit is created when, when 100 deceased uh, members uh, agree to convey equitable title across so that the supreme credit may be created as an underwriting tool to underwrite currency. So this is uh, ex exactly the same as the concept of spirit, divine mind or soul, underwriting currency. But it's, it, is, it is consent, it is open, it is willful, it is not trickery, it is not condemning, it is blessing. So it is, it is the mirror reverse of the Khazarian Menashe bankers system of curse. It's one of blessing and healing, hence it's called credit, not debt. Um, it is very important that as we roll this out, that it is a system that um, uh, is tested, it's a system that's understood, it's a system that's embraced, and it's a system that in no way uh, repeats the mistakes of the present world. But right now, it's about people seeing um, that it is possible and that it is time for, for heroes to stand against the system. Now, through that, what's going to happen is at some point, when enough people know, the system will crack. The finance system is close to collapsing, has been close to collapsing virtually every week for, for several years now. It doesn't matter what we've done, the existing bankers, the existing um, uh, politicians, who are all, by the way, members of the Knights of Malta and therefore gritted into the existing system, I don't want to change. Their argument is, I can't. You know, I've got these guys called the SS around me. If I do anything, they'll shoot me. Or my family, I can't do it. Or, you know, it's all fear. You know, you think the fear that we have? These people live in constant fear. That's why they stick to the rules. You know, if you do something, I've got pictures of you, you know, having sex with some little, you know, poor little girl, or I've, I've got pictures of you taking bribes. And this is a game that's been going on for far too long. So they refuse by fear or ignorance or arrogance or whatever to move. So ultimately, it's going to be um, only by force, ultimately, that will cause them to recognise so yes, the Global Union Reserve Bank is a fundamental component. It needs to be spruced up. There needs to be a lot of um, a tidy up. But this is why it's taking 25 years to get this ready. Uh, so I look forward to the feedback. And by the way, criticism is a helpful uh, tool. Criticism is one of the elements in the last few weeks that has helped refine this. I've taken what, you know, in many respects is unfair criticism, and, and, and saw that, that there was something that we needed to be learning. So I appreciate the praise, that's lovely, but all of you are perfectly entitled in every way to look at things and see how it can be improved. Remember, this is going from being a hierarchy to a, a viral. So as a viral, it's going to be at the grassroots that we perfect it. Okay, um, uh, what else have we got? Uh, Okay, da, 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 da. Um, Okay. All right. I don't. Yeah, I don't have uh, control over the sound, so I can't do the. I, I can't do the uh, the changes you suggest, Terry. Um, but it's still working. So. Um, okay. Question uh, from Andy Y K Y again. Uh, I'm a newbie. I've uh, been through nearly all the four episode calls. Uh, where do you recommend beginning to do a serious study of this stuff to get a well-informed understanding of it? And what should one do to begin to implement this stuff? Uh, I've said this all the way through, and I think it, it, it stands true today. Uh, you need to have a good grounding of, of even the most 
fundamental principles of what is law. So I do suggest for everyone that they read uh, positive law, that they read um, divine law, they read natural law, and they read ecclesiastical law. And when you do that, um, you'll start to gain, well, you will definitely start to gain a competence. Now, when you read that, a question people ask me, and it's a valid question, where does this come from? It comes from the existing law, largely, and some of it is, is, is actually new, but the, the essential maxims come principally from the law embedded in what you see in the hundreds of thousands of pages of jurisprudence, case law, uh, dictionaries, and of course their 60 million statutes that they uh, put us under, rules they put us under. The reason it comes from that is this. When they teach their people the law, they teach them the lie and the truth at the same time. So the first people they lie to are, are their own. That's why uh, it's, a, it's an onerous process to get a law degree because you have to learn a whole lot of basic rubbish that within it is embedded the truth. Now, some people have different skills. Some people can paint. Some people can see things. Some people can feel things. We all have different talents. Something I have developed over time is to be able to see things that vibrate in truth and things that do not. So what effectively we did was go through, you know, what I did was effectively go through and extract out the maxims of law embedded in their system. That is still the framework they run by. Now, I'll prove to you now why this is true. The system, in spite of having this a huge mountain of, of disinformation over it where we're convinced to tap our heels twice, pir pirouette, you know, put in three copies and hope like hell we, we get through when none of that has anything to do with the law. The reason we can prove that the positive law and the maxims that I've shown you in those uh, canons are true is that they ensure that one person at least in the court has some knowledge of the law and that's the judge. And what they try and do is get everyone else to think of illogical, irrational and unreasonable things and thereby prove their incompetence. So this is all based on the predication that no one that goes to court has a clue about the essentials of law. No one. And if that's true, then pretty much they can keep doing their magic. And that's the way they've run it for a long time. So they want us to read Black's or Oxford Law. They want us to believe the principles that we see, and that, that is the law. The UCC is not the law. When we use the UCC, we're using their own system against them. That's a biblical thing. You know, the time will come at the end of days that we, the iniquity, their iniquity will be used against them. That's all we're doing. We're just fulfilling something that, that needs to be done. But the law, the real law, is the extracted essence that's in those canons. So I hope that answers a query that you may have. And I've, I've, hopefully I've answered your question of, of what to go and have a look at. Okay? The problem with, sorry, it gets 26. The question, the numbers can't go out in terms of the questions is that our host, unfortunately, has lost the ability to unmute you. And so we're not being able to get to unmute people. I'm sorry for this call because I love getting the voices interaction. And we'll make sure next time that we won't get this technical problem. So I'm sorry it sounds like I'm doing a monologue, but... Uh, otherwise, I would love to, to hear um, your voice and, and, and answer it that way. Okay, guest 26. How do we apply this to a brethren who has been kidnapped and been held a prisoner in a warehouse penal debt system? I'll answer that. If you know next of kin, let's go back to an old principle uh, of uh, slave law. And remember that, that they claim that slavery is dead, and we know that that's a lie. So let's work on the basis that... Um, uh, let's, let's just nail this question. You've heard the phrase, all law, uh, sorry, all crime is commercial. All crime is commercial. It, in Ur Namu, one of the original codes of law from the, the infamous city of Ur, the principle is all law against slaves is commercial. So if a slave owner next to me, and in fact this is the origin of, of habeas, uh, habeas corpus, if, if a slave owner next to me stole one of my st stole, stolen, happened to steal, sorry, steal one of my slaves, then, then that uh, property owner 
uh, is guilty of uh, property theft. And I could claim that property 